Hi, I'm Thermo Generator and I'm here today with my second Thermo Mix lesson um, for those of you who are homeschooling. And today we are making Play-Doh. So I'm gonna take you through the recipe and how to make the Play-Doh and then I'm going to offer you some activities. Very few ingredients are needed to make Play-Doh and it's extremely cheap to make. So we have some salt, you need some cream of tartar, some oil, some sort of cooking oil, I'm using vegetable oil, um, plain flour, water, and some food dye. So the first step is to add 250 grams of water. And to that we add salt, 100 grams of cooking salt. So tear my scale back, add my salt. And we need a tablespoon of cream of tartar. I'm gonna heat this for five minutes. at 60 degrees. On speed three. So now that we've cooked the water and the salt and the cream of tartar, we're going to add the flour. We want 250 grams of plain flour. Get that last little bit out. Oh, wow. There we are. And we're going to mix that on speed four for 40 seconds. So you can notice that it's really thickening up like a dough. That's exactly the consistency that we want. Now we have a look inside the bowl. There we go. And we need to let it cool now because the next part we're going to need it, but then we're going to be handling it. So we need to make sure that it's um, cool before we start putting our fingers in there. So whilst your Play-Doh is cooling, this could be a really great opportunity um, for you to start playing with some colors and deciding on the colors for your Play-Doh. Um, depending on how many bottles of food dye you have at hand will depend on how many colours that you might create. Um, but it is a great opportunity to um, talk to your children about primary colours and the primary colours of course being black and white but also red, blue and yellow and how we can mix those colours to create secondary colours. Um, so let's just have a little look. I've got some... Um, water here and an eyedropper look you hardly need any so i would if you've got an eyedropper or the tip of a teaspoon is all you all you really need but let's say we want to mix a couple of drops of red with some yellow and get them to predict what color do they think that red and yellow mixed together is going to create. And we've created a beautiful orange. Maybe they want orange Play-Doh. So you can go on doing this um, um, and mixing different colored dyes together to make secondary colors. But you can also perhaps talk about shades. Like I want, I want some green, but I want some light green and some dark green. So I happen to have 
a bottle of green, but I could have made it with blue and yellow, of course. But so if I want it to be a really light green, my intensity is very light and let's and we mix that and then you can talk to them about getting a darker shade and of course shade is the key word there so you can add some more and see what happens it becomes a darker shade of green so this is a little mini lesson in itself and it could be quite fun just to mix up some different colors and get them to decide what colors they want to actually add to their play-doh so now that my dough has cooled I'm going to add um, 25 grams of cooking oil here we go and place the lid on and put the TM6 into interval speed or dose dough mode and I'm going to need it for a couple of minutes Off it goes. I'm hoping that you can see through the hole in the lid what's happening. The kids love to watch this, how it's all being incorporated and the blade is going forwards and then in reverse. And it's just incorporating that oil all into the dough. It's not going to come out as a silky ball. The Play-Doh is just going to come out sort of grainy and we pull it together with our hands. Okay. When the Thermomix is kneading any dough, edible or non-edible like play-doh you can hear that it's going in two two second intervals so what it's actually doing is stretching the dough and then relaxing it now this isn't typical of an edible dough what an edible dough looks like when it comes out but remember this is play-doh and what we're going to do is <clears throat> i'm going to tip it out and divide it into four portions and then put it back into the bowl and add the food dye for the colors that I want, because I want four different colors. However, if you've only got one food dye, just add it in now and mix it through. I'll show you that in a tick. So I've just tipped this out, and this is always a really good tip to release doughs off your blade. Always um, give, the, give the bottom of the blade a wriggle. Now you can see that there's quite um, a bit left in there, so I'm just gonna pull that out with my spatula. There we go. Lovely. And I'll bring all this together with my hands. Oh, nothing's nicer. I love it. It's so soft and silky. It's squidgy. All right. So, and I'm going to divide that into four because I'm going to make four smaller balls out of that one portion. And each portion is going to go back into the bowl separately with some food dye. So I want really quite a dark green. So um, as we were talking about before, we make it more intense by adding more drops. So I've got my dark green there and then I just mix it through on speed for a few seconds it's not quite green enough for me so I'm going to add a couple more drops oh now it's becoming more intense lovely and if you have a look inside the bowl, you'll see that it's all grainy again. And it's just a matter of me now kneading, kneading that colour through the dough. So once again, I dispense it out. And the kids will just love this part, mixing it through. And the feeling between the fingers is gorgeous. It's so squidgy. 
and they'll see their block of dough come together. It's quite marbled initially, so you really have to do quite a bit of kneading. Pick up any bits. You can see it's coming, coming together. And this part of the job, the kids will absolutely love to do. They can be as rough as they want you know, until it's all mixed through and they've got a lovely solid ball of dough. Go. So in a matter of, you know, 20 minutes or half an hour, I've made eight beautiful balls of coloured Play-Doh. Now to preserve them, you do need to make sure that you have them airtight so that they don't go hard and um, salty and cracked. So I just wrap each individual ball in plastic wrap. And then I just put them all into an ice cream container or some sort of plastic container and store them in there. Now watch this space. I'm going to come up with lots of activities um, for you and your kids to do with their Play-Doh. So my first activity is probably for the younger kids, but um, it's about practicing writing and, you know, you encourage them to use um, a correct pencil grip. That's really important. So. Um, I'm using a, quite a solid uh, cardboard straw. It seems to be quite perfect. For older kids, they might be able to use a toothpick um, to etch in there as well. It works quite nicely. But I think the thicker straw is probably better for, you know, five and six and five and six year olds, four, five and six year olds. Yeah. So all I did was made the tray by pressing down a ball of Play-Doh and into that etch the word. So Charlie might write his name. Oh, am I going to make it? That gives you the idea anyway. So they could be practicing handwriting. So um, with a ball of dough or half a ball of dough, I've made a snake. Um, it's a great way for you to practice your children's sight vocab. So let's let's take the word um, uh, come. So we. Create the word. So you could make the word and get your child to read it. Um, or you might want to get the child to try and make the letters themselves. And look, if they're, if they're not up to reading words yet, do it with letters and numbers. All sorts of things we can do. And it makes it fun and it's so therapeutic touching this stuff. It's like a stress ball, it's beautiful. And manipulation of Play-Doh is so good for your children's development of their muscles um, and their fine motor skills. So it's a perfect tool for their development. It's great for you to be homeschooling with. So there you go, so there's the word come and you could go through um, the sight vocab that they know or the letters of the alphabet that they know, or the numbers from one to 10 or one to 20, they can make them themselves or you can make them to read back to you. So I've chosen an Easter theme to work on today, but you could be choosing anything, um, the jungle, underwater, animals, plants, fairies, whatever you like. And I've chosen, uh, I've just um, printed off some templates. So for, little people instead of using a texture or whatever to trace over the top you could use your play-doh to just outline an easter egg for example so it's all about this rolling thing and then using it around like so oh how 
does that for judgment? That wasn't bad. All right, so do that. And then using a different color, they can fill in the patterns and the decorations on the inside of the egg. Yeah, I'm sure you get the gist. And this is great um, fun. It's relevant considering I'm using Easter as my theme. It's also um, a fabulous fine motor because that's that takes a lot of fine motor skills. So it's it's really good. Well, you can simply make your own stencils for the kids. And once again, I'm using Easter eggs, but you could just simply um, make another Play-Doh tray, place your stencil over the top and using a skewer, create your Play-Doh egg and then decorate it with other colored Play-Dohs. And of course, sculpting, sculpting so much fun and they can make anything that they desire. You know, I've just made a little Easter bunny there. Um, but yeah, so there's all sorts of things that they can do. And another thing that um, I used to find was great practice for using scissors for our preschoolers is to make a snake out of Play-Doh and snipping. Just getting them to snip. Now, I'm sure that you've probably got loads and loads of bits and pieces around at home that they can use as tools with their, um, their Play-Doh. So I've just got cookie cutters, um, buttons. If you've got some, a button tin, an old button tin, they can make fantastic decorations, skewers, toothpicks. If, you've got, if you're a baker and you do a lot of cake decorating, I'm sure you wouldn't mind letting them have a few of your bits and pieces that you decorate your cakes with. Um, they might already have a Play-Doh set where they can um, use that to complement the homemade Play-Doh. The sky's the limit with this. I really hope you've enjoyed um, my second lesson on making Play-Doh in the Thermomix and that it's going to help you during this homeschooling period. Um, would absolutely love it if you could send me pictures of your kids' creations if you utilise this video. Thanks.